Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, joined by attorney Stephen Jessup, and today we're going to discuss a resolved case against a Hartford disability insurance company. And Stephen, this was a long-term disability claim, and in these videos we talk about the background of the case, um, what you were able to do for the claim, and then also provide some tips for a Hartford disability claimant so that they could either help themselves to avoid a denial, or if they're trying to do an appeal on their own and they want some helpful information, hopefully they can gain some information from this video. So let's get into the background of this particular claim. Yeah, so this uh, client, she was a former prior to disability, a registered respiratory therapist for a hospital system. Um, she went out on disability um, in 2018. Hartford initially approved her claim under mental health. You know, she had, you know, mental health conditions, uh, depression, anxiety, you know, pretty severe, um, and, but also had some physical ailments. Um, however, Hartford only deemed that her mental health condition would be disabling, which under this policy, like most, was limited to 24 months of benefits. Uh, so they paid her for those 24 months purely under that, and then only at the very end uh, of that review, towards the end of that review, did they even take a look at and say, you know, oh, we don't think there's any physical conditions that would raise to a level of, you know, work-related impairment. Uh, and they denied her benefit at that point. Now, prior to that 24-month mental nervous limitation, which you said is common in all policies, was she treating with other types of doctors? She had a, a just a nurse practitioner um, in, for you know primary care. There was no specialists involved or anything like that. So when she contacted us with the denial uh, at the end of 2020, it was a tough case in the sense that there wasn't a lot of you know strong medical information to support you know treatment and problems like this. The overwhelming amount of it was it was on a mental health basis. And what types of physical issues was she treating with? Uh, for? Fibromyalgia was the main one, and she had some thyroid dysfunction um, which you know we argued would would in you know cause fatigue you know the you know hormone production stuff like that but really the only leg we had to stand on was was the diagnosis of fibromyalgia which as we know the insurance company say well it's subjective there's no way to verify it we think your complaints are somatic based on the mental health condition so it was a tough case right when you got the claim and you're reading it and I know when you read them and when I read them right away we know we read a denial letter and we go, wow, I wish I had this, or I wish I had that, or this is why it got denied. What came into your mind right away when you read the denial letter and you said to yourself, wow, I wish she had done this differently and it probably wouldn't have been denied? Uh, well, I think, you know, I think if she had at least treated more, you know, maybe seen a specialist for it. Uh, and she admitted in conversation that, you know, they were paying her, so she thought everything would just be fine, you know, that would work itself out. And I, I don't think there's anything you can fault someone for expecting an insurance company to do right by them. You know, we see it differently because we deal with this day in, day out. But for someone who, you know, their employer told them you have these policies, they'll be there to protect you in case you need it, she expected they were going to do the right thing by her. So I would say seeing a specialist, you know, at least having information to argue. Now, is that to say it would have avoided denial? Not necessarily, because Hartford has an incentive to try to claim it's just mental health because it's a hard 24-month liability as opposed to paying her out to age 67. And when you talk about fibromyalgia, what type of specialist would you have recommended? Uh, you know, even if she had went in with a rheumatologist to make sure there weren't other any underlying conditions there, sometimes I've seen with pain management, um, even her treatment with her nurse practitioner, I wish we would have seen more of that. Um, you know, they didn't, Hartford, Hartford, didn't necessarily argue that you know the nurse practitioner wasn't qualified like trying to say oh my md outweighs your your np it was more of a there's just not enough treatment if this is so severe there should have been more treatment you would see more evidence in the in the records about you know impairment and restrictions and things like that what about the issue with our, a lot of we helped a lot of people that have depression, anxiety. Mm -hmm. What about the lack of motivation to even go see another doctor? How does that play into Yeah, that? you know, that's that's a very valid point and something that did come in here because her mental health status was pretty severe. You know, even early on in speaking with her in our email communications and stuff like that, you know, it's very severe. That treatment, but for that 24 month limitation, I would have never met this lady, I don't think. It was, it was that disabling. And uh, that weighed into it a lot. And then she, you know, it also trickled in. Not only, you know, she's not working, um, but she's having problems, you know, with housing and family and marital. So there's this horrible storm of things going on. And at some point, I think she did kind of just 
try to like shut down as much outside stuff as she could. Okay, so from everything I've heard so far, I'd be like, Steve, how are you going to win this case? What did you do? Yeah, so, you know, even when I evaluate it with her, and I try to be very upfront with a lot of my clients, you know, when, when, or potential clients when I'm speaking with them, and I said, listen, you, we need to reasonably expect that this is a very possible outcome. We need to do the appeal. We're going to do X, Y, and Z as part of the appeal, which we'll get into. Um, but you need to expect that Hartford is, is, is going to have a good chance of still denying it based on the medical information that already exists. And in that case, we can look to litigate, you know, and then we can look to get something for it. So I, in this situation especially, you had to have that conversation. This is a reasonable outcome of it. Um, but with it, I, you know, looking always at something when they're going to claim it's subjective and there's no restrictions and limitations. You know, we made arguments, you know, that we like to make when it's just a peer review. Well, this doctor reviewed file. Uh, you know, in no way, shape, or form did they, you know, they didn't perform any type of, you know, examination. There's no testing done. It's just based on opinions looking at medical records. Uh, so for that, we did a functional capacity evaluation just to try to establish what her physical abilities would be for work. You know, is she going to be able to get into a workplace setting again? Uh, the functional capacity evaluation was probably some of our strongest, you know, objective evidence. Because uh, with fibromyalgia, it's not like you can do an MRI or a, a scan and prove that it's there. And we were able to then use with that FCE, and her nurse practitioner was great, very supportive um, to be able to get, uh, you know, targeted attending physician statements and stuff like that, you know, as part of the appeal to Hartford. And so you put all that together, you submitted a, a fairly extensive appeal or the best that you could based upon the evidence you had obtained. And what did Hartford do upon review? You know, I was... I was, uh, I was surprised how quick they got the review done. A lot of times Hartford will take their 45-day extension. I think the case was approved within about prior to 45 days uh, expiring. We got notice that they were going to reinstate the benefit for her. Um, I, was, I was very, very happy. I mean, she was ecstatic because it was a very difficult case. Um, so sometimes, you know, since we're not privy to getting copies of the claim files, we don't know what those doctors who did reviews of the stuff we submitted, what their opinions were. Uh, but obviously what we presented was enough for doctors at Hartford hired to override what the prior doctors had determined. Not only the doctors that denied the case at the 24 month, but the initial doctors who said there's nothing here physically. So two sets of, of eyes had already looked at this and said there was nothing here to disable her physically speaking. Now, did you have an issue in this case where you had to prove that the fibromyalgia was primary and the depression was secondary to the fibro as a disabling condition, or did you just have to prove that there was something else physical that was disabling? In this situation, I had to prove it was a fibromyalgia disabling because there was no question that the mental health aspect was. The mental health aspect didn't derive out of the fibromyalgia. And Hartford was looking at, if anything, the fibromyalgia was a somatic manifestation of the mental health. Um, so this one, I tried to put blinders on as to any of the mental health history and just focus on what information we had to support the fibromyalgia diagnosis and the restrictions stemming from it. Some of the mental nervous um, limitation definitions say that if your mental nervous condition um, is causing or contributing mm -hmm. to your disability, then you'll be limited. Did you have that particular language in this disability policy? Not in this one, not in this one. And that's always a very troubling uh, thing because there's no question it's contributed to. Um, strangely, I have found through the years that claims and at the appeal level, a lot of times I don't know if it's not savvy enough they don't make that argument, but I see lawyers, if we're in litigation, make that argument. Hey, it's, it's contributed. This is the language in the policy. There's discretionary authority in the policy. We paid out the 24 months. This didn't have that, um, so I didn't have to worry about that. And if it did, again, blinders. We're not even going to consider mental health or even how they define it for purposes of that appeal. You said you see lawyers make this cause or contributed to argument in litigation. If it was never made in the appeal, is there any weight or validity to the uh, lawyer arguing it in, in litigation? Well, in the sense that it's policy language. So if they look at policy language, you know, and a judge is going to just strictly construe the policy language in favor of the interpretation of the insurance company, it's a big problem. Uh, Unum's a different company altogether, but they have language in their policies that they can cut you off, you know, in the first 24 months if they think you can do part-time work and choose not to in your own occupation, and then after that in any occupation. It's a thing you don't see argued a lot in their denials, right. but it is something to always be concerned about for the process of litigation because the plan documents are there to be argued. 
So it is a legal nuance that we deal with all the time, so it's something that people should be aware of, especially if you don't have a Hartford policy that I think the tip takeaway from this is you really want to treat with a doctor that specializes in your particular physical limitation so that you can make it where your physical becomes the primary. Because if the depression stays, nine out of 10 times they're gonna say that you're limited by that right. mental nervous limitation. Now moving forward for this claimant, you continue to represent her and, and help with the claim. What suggestions or changes have, has the client made in order to help protect the benefits moving forward? She is getting in. She got a referral for a specialist. And they're also going to do blood panel work to make sure there isn't some other underlying, where there's an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. Um, so that's where we're now. I mean, the approval we just received, uh, you know, within the past 30 days, I'd say. So it's not like they've done any updated reviews. Um, but now that she has the funds coming in, uh, she is seeking, you know, that treat with, treatment with a, uh, a specialist. And, and much like your other claims, you anticipate that now that she's approved, there'll be no mm -hmm. issues for the rest of her duration of being on claim? I, I, you know, it's, it's Hartford, so there's always going to any insurance. I always tell people, if you're in a relationship with an insurance company for your financial, you know, security, it's going to be a rocky road. You know, it's going to be a rocky road. You know, what we're hoping for her as well. Um, you know, working with uh, her social security attorney, we're waiting for a decision on that. You know, and Hartford does engage in lump sum settlements. So I, I think for her and just because that mental health component, regardless if they don't have to pay for it, is such a huge impact on it that the stress of having them in her life is, is very troubling to her. So maybe eventually try to transition into a lump sum settlement, you know, in the not too distant future. And since you mentioned Social Security disability, what impact, if any, does that have on her ability to remain on claim with Hartford? Well, you know, if Social Security approves, um, you know, like I said, working with her Social Security attorney, the concern always is if Social Security only approves on account of the mental health, Hartford can piggyback that and try to roll that again. We at least now have a situation where Hartford has acknowledged the existence of the fibromyalgia and the dis disability there. So that's a, that's a concern. But, uh, you know, for another, you know, bigger picture for her claim is if Social Security is approved, um, and say they do, fibromyalgia is one of the diagnoses. So Hartford has to consider that evidence of disability, but they don't have to abide by it. They could easily have another doctor review later on and say, I find this, and Hartford says, well, we know you have Social Security, but we've done an updated review that they don't have that information. That's why we're denying. So if Social Security is approved, obviously there's gonna have to be a repayment of any overpayment, the offsetting of her benefit. In a situation like her, since I've been with her for now a little while, um, if that comes through, uh, I would almost recommend, and her and I have discussed, when submitting the overpayment repayment, contemporaneously looking for, you know, I indicating for a lump sum settlement. But this claim shows the importance of, we don't handle Social Security Disability mm -hmm. Appeals, but this shows the importance of you working with the Social Security Disability Lawyer, because if Social Security does do primary depression mm -hmm. as a disabling condition, Hartford's going to take that and likely try to cut her off and say, well, they didn't really say that the fibromyalgia was disabling. Mm -hmm. So now the evidence that you built up has to be used by the Social Security lawyer to try to and, and communicate to the Social Security lawyer, you need to make the fibromyalgia primary with secondary symptoms of depression. And that will help her claim a lot versus if it goes depression the other way. And we deal with this all the time yeah. because Social Security lawyers who don't communicate with us, they just want to do whatever it takes to get the benefits mm -hmm. approved. But you can't do whatever it takes to get a Social Security approved and then end up jeopardizing your long-term disability claim. So you always have to be aware of that relationship between Social Security disability claim and the private disability insurance claim or group disability insurance claim. Also, we see the same issue with workers' compensation claims yeah. because you have all these different um, types of sources of benefits, but there's different eligibility requirements. And if you don't try to... Um, merge all of them together for the best interests of all the policies, then you can get into a problem. So it's good that you're working with her Social Security lawyer to help protect her Hartford benefits and make sure she gets Social Security disability. If you're somebody who has a Hartford long-term disability insurance claim, feel free to reach out to Stephen, myself, any of our disability lawyers. No matter where you live in the country, we always provide an immediate free phone consultation. And should you need any help whatsoever with your Hartford claim, we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you. Hi, I'm Gregory Dell, the managing attorney of Dell Disability Lawyers, and I hope you find the video you just watched helpful. We put these videos out all of the time, and we'd love if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Beyond our videos on our YouTube channel, we also have lots of information available on our website at diattorney.com, and we encourage you to come to our website. The goal is, is that we want you to be educated about the disability insurance process, and when you get to our website, you'll see that we have information all about your specific disability insurance company, your occupation, and your medical condition. And we've designed our website such that you can easily search our website to find things that you may specifically be looking for. Now at our website, we have thousands and thousands of pages of information, hundreds of videos that you can search, plus we're building a section of reviews of all the disability insurance companies, and we have the Ask Our Lawyer section where you can go ahead and ask us any questions that you may have. Now we realize that you may not need us right now, but you may need us in the future to help you with your disability claim and we think one of the best ways to keep in touch is by clicking the button below and subscribing to our channel. And most importantly, again, no matter where you live in the country, we're always available. Just go ahead and give us a call. We're happy to discuss your claim and let you know immediately if we can help you.